Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spinning Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 195, and of course I couldn't go another day without reviewing Venom number three for you guys. Uh, so I'm sorry I'm a little late on this. Yesterday, like I said, I just had a, the worst day ever on Wednesday, and I actually couldn't go to my local comic shop until this morning to pick up a copy. Um, so I will give out the digital code, so boom, right there. There's a digital code for issue number three, and I still have two more digital codes to give away for issue number two. One from Venom Panhead Gaming and one from my own version. Uh, I actually got a copy of Venom number two in the mail uh, this week and so on a future video near future video We will give those codes out So anyone out there who hasn't read Venom number two you can definitely have a chance to win your own copy There will be two chances to win um, and I'll probably do, spread them out put them on different videos for you guys um, So Venom number three, so I will say I did enjoy this issue more than number two overall I thought the artwork still is stellar Ryan Stegman is crushing this book visually and his art team his colorists everyone who's working on it the inkers like they're they're all the team itself working on the art is what's selling this book to me every month now that and the name venom uh, so no matter what I'm gonna buy a book probably with the word venom on it but I am still gonna be critical and, and share my opinions on things and if I don't like something I'm gonna say I don't like it and just because it's venom doesn't give it a pass and that goes for movie stuff and for comic book stuff um, but I was very excited for Donny Cates on this book because of his Thanos run. And then also I was liking what he was doing with Damnation with Doctor Strange. He actually got me to pick up a Doctor Strange book for the first time in like maybe 20 or 25 years. I haven't read Doctor Strange since the 90s run, and that run I really did like a lot. Uh, but since then, I haven't really bought any book that said Doctor Strange on it, maybe outside the Skrzynski miniseries that he did, um, like 10 or 15 years back. Uh, but so I was excited. I was like, all right, Donny Cates, you know, in interviews, he kind of worried me a little bit. He would say things sometimes that, you know, as you guys know, I'm like, ah, all right, dude, maybe doesn't matter. <laughs> don't say, you know, you don't have to go into those kind of details. Just tell us about the book, talk about the book and why you're excited for the book. Um, but, uh, he wrote a little bit of a better issue in this one. I really like the, um, you know, or I guess I should say where this book starts. It starts off with Miles Morales and uh, Venom fighting. And so Venom, Eddie Brock is inside the symbiote somewhere kind of mentally shoved back in the back of its mind and he's like curled up in a ball on a web and he's freaking out and he's like you know like what happened how did i get here and he goes oh wait a minute spider-man he goes i'm killing spider-man and you see his eyes and there's like that red swirl from the creature you know that took over the symbiote in the first issue and so he's seeing through the the symbiote's eyes now and he's seeing that miles morales is almost dead and so eddie fights back and he then he comes through and he says kid kill me kill me so then the miles morales does his venom blast shoots eddie brock in the mouth separates the suit temporarily and gives eddie brock control back and then he starts wailing on eddie brock and eddie brock's like whoa kid what's going on what's going on and he's like you know you hurt my mother like you know a symbiote like you put my dad in the hospital and then also you know killed my mother uh you know but she's back but you know he's like trying to explain that whole thing and eddie's like look man that wasn't me i don't know what's going on and but if you still hate me and everything you we can deal with that afterwards we have a bigger threat to deal with and i'm glad venom pointed that out uh, you know i know miles when he saw the symbiote he probably like went red and was like all right i'm going to kill this thing before it hurts anyone else or maybe it's an agent of that big creature and i'll let the avengers take care of that and i'll fight this one so there's at least a little some you know there's some rationale as to why maybe miles would go right to venom and ignore the big dragon and then uh, you know but then it is, it is nice to see them go no there's there's a bigger threat here like eddie's like i'm not the threat i'm not trying to hurt anyone uh, i understand i'm you know not in control of myself but I'm not the bad guy here, that thing is. So if you can do that Venom Blast thing to that, that'll be great. And so Venom comes up with a plan to grab Miles and throw him right at the creature and have the creature eat Miles. And then Miles does a Venom Blast from inside the creature and completely, what we think, annihilates uh, you know, the symbiote or this big dragon thing. We think it's annihilated, but really what it does is it pours down like a symbiote and then coming out of it is a is like this big gothy vampire uh, looking guy who's uh, holding Miles Morales by the head and he's like, hey creature, is this yours? And he throws, uh, you know, Miles is down, you know, Miles' body down on the ground, who he's still alive. Uh, Eddie's checking on him and he finds out he's still alive, uh, but Miles got his butt kicked. Uh, even though he did the Venom Blast, it took a lot out of him. So he didn't have a, uh, you know, he couldn't put up a fight and this, you know, vampire looking guy kind of tossed him aside and then starts talking to Eddie. But you think he's talking to Eddie. He's actually talking to the suit. And once again, everything's going along smoothly. Everything's going well. And then there's one little line. Again, I don't want to fixate on things like this. 
too much because it looks like it's going to happen every time in Donny Cates' run. It just looks like there's going to be things that he is not going to pay attention to continuity-wise. And if that's the case, that's fine. Now I, it's clear to me that that's going to happen. So I will try to be less nitpicky on lines like this. But I will at least mention it to you guys so you know why I'm being a little nitpicky, which is uh, there's a line where he says uh, to the symbiote, you know, he, he calls it over. He's like, why is your you know suit or why is your host screaming at me? He's like, I want you, child. Come to me. So the suit comes to, you know, this creature who we find out his name is Null, K-N-U-L-L, -L, Null. And he picks up the symbiote and he's like, oh, he's like, oh, I see what's happened. You're too corrupted by humanity. You forgot who you really were. And he's like, so let me purge humanity's influence on you from you so that way you can become my servant again. And then Eddie's like, no, don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. And he runs to him, uh, to Null, and Null grabs Eddie and leans in and says, you want to know who I am, human? He's like, I'll tell you. And he sh you know, hypnotizes him, makes Eddie see, you know, the past and you flash, you know, back a a billion years or so and you see that Null is sitting on a throne on uh, Clintar and he is the god that all the symbiotes used to worship so he's like an ancient deity and so the spider logo uh, which I knew they were gonna try to do something like this the spider logo on his chest isn't really a spider uh, kind of it's more of a, uh, a depiction of this giant dragon god that we saw at the end of the first issue and into the second issue and that's like the shell or what's made up of the shell for Null. So he has like two forms. He has this humanoid form, uh, which, you know, honestly, I love Ryan Stegman. I think the book is drawn really well. But from a design standpoint, this guy looks very generic. Uh, he looks very much like a Vlad Tempest, you know, like dr early Dracula concept design. And uh, I... I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really work for me. There's all these things you could do if you're dealing with alien races, and I always hate when they just default to humanoid with two arms and two legs, uh, and then long white hair on top of it. I was just like, a uh, little less inspired for me uh, from a design standpoint, but the point is this guy is bad news. He's a billion years old, and he's been worshipped by the symbiotes since a, possibly their inception, or at least since they first became sentient or aware of, of higher beings. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. Um, a part of it I'm not really digging, but the line he says is he's like, you know, you've been, I'm going to purge you of humanity. They've had too much influence on you. That does make sense on some level. You know, obviously the symbiote has been on Earth and has been influenced by, uh, you know, humanity. Peter Parker, Flash Thompson, Matt Gargan, uh, you know, everyone who's ever had the suit. Eddie Brock, obviously. Uh, but then... There's, there's, there's also like this part where if you go back and read Planet of the Symbiotes, which is being reprinted and coming out soon, so a lot of you who haven't got a chance to get it before will be able to read it soon enough. Um, in there, there is a line or two about the symbiote being different, that the specific suit was different and it was outcast to the battle world, uh, and that's where it was left to be jailed or used at Beyonder's disposal or whoever wants to use it use it at their disposal for, for the purposes on Battleworld. So it was like outcast there and put there away from the Clintars. It was shut out because it was different uh, than the other ones. So to me, I feel like if no, if, if Donny Cates knew that or wanted to factor that continuity in, then when Noel picked up the symbiote, he would notice the influence of humanity, but he would notice something else there too. And again, there's probably still room to do that in future issues and, and everything. So I'm not trying to nitpick too much. I'm just pointing it out as a continuity thing. Uh, but uh, but otherwise, I thought this issue was much stronger than the last one. And I really liked the dynamic between Miles and Eddie. I thought the, the dialogue was great. Um, I thought their motivations for doing things was very clear. And it helped move the story along. And it got us back to focus on this big creature. It took us away from Rex, which was kind of nice. We're, you know, two, we were two issues in. And we had a lot of Rex stuff. So it's nice to get an issue without him and kind of focus on like the the, the bigger threat in a way uh, but then also the symbiote god thing i mean I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the concept um, that there's this like big god that the symbiotes once worshipped I, I know it, it, it's like, oh yeah, you can rationalize it anyway and you can make it make sense and you can make it work. And it was mentioned in the Carnage miniseries and it builds off some things that were mentioned before, uh, but, or not, not miniseries, but like 16 issue series that came out by Jerry Conway. Uh, so it, it, I know it's part of the, the you know, universe. I think they also Space Knight mentioned uh, a god. So it, in a way it's kind of been set up and it makes sense for Donny Cates to pick up those threads and move forward with it. Um, but there's still a part of me that's kind of like, uh, it just, it feels very generic. Like it feels very typical uh, direction to go in uh, with the story and I, th I thought we were kind of going to get something new here and that's kind of what Donny Cates promoted as I want to do something with Venom that you've never seen before and granted we haven't seen this with Venom before but I feel like we've seen a lot of this if you read enough science fiction and fiction in general and horror stuff you've seen a ton of stories like this before uh, so so that maybe is why I'm, I'm railing against it a little bit but overall I thought this issue was much better and I thought Donny Cates is you know he's got a good hold on Eddie 
personally, minus continuity stuff aside, he does have a pretty good hold on Eddie, I think. And uh, I like the stuff he did with Miles. And I'm interested to see where it goes from here. So if you guys have any different opinions or the same opinions, whatever you want, let me know down in the comments below. Do you have a favorite moment in this issue? Uh, did you like something other than the art? Do you like the story? Are you really digging on it so far? Um, like I said, this pulled me back in. I was starting to pull out. This pulled me back in a little bit. But I am still a little like this doesn't really... This is what the guy looks like, and he's got the sim, the you know, the symbol of the spider, but it's red, but it has a little tail coming down. And I just kind of figured they were gonna, you know, do something like that eventually, especially with the movie coming out. I feel like they're gonna try to separate Venom, you know, uh, lore with Spider-Man lore to help the movie you know, people's mindset change, you know, for the movie a little bit, or at least people who are reading comics. Um, but, uh, but I feel like it's a little unnecessary to go that route. Uh, but again, it's not the end of the story yet. And I'm interested to see where it goes from here. So they must be doing something right. So again, let me know what you think down below. And as always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.